Hello and welcome to In Depth. My name is Aditi Nakpal Girotra. On Friday, two MPs, Dr. Virinder Kumar and Rajendra Singh, were slated to present reports of the Committee on Petitions in the Lok Sabha. Now, the Committee on Petitions refers to a singular forum that offers citizens an opportunity to seek redressal for any legitimate grievance against the government or any public authority. In a parliamentary democracy, aggrieved citizens use offices of the members of parliament to get their grievances redressed. Members of parliament have at their disposal such parliamentary procedures and devices as questions, short duration discussions, calling attention notices, half an hour discussions to ventilate people's grievances. But in addition to these, the two houses of parliament have their respective committees on petitions. These provide yet another forum for citizens to secure redress against acts of injustice committed by any public authority. However, this forum is available only in a limited number of cases. But nevertheless, it has been an important link between the people and the government. Our, in, our topic in in-depth today examines this vital democratic forum that is available to citizens. We look at some of the seminal ways in which it has made a difference to the lives of citizens. The Raj Sabha Committee on Petitions was constituted in 1952, the same year the Raj Sabha was formed. It was to have a chairman and four other members. In 1964, the number of members in the committee was increased to 10. The committee is constituted under Rule 147 of the Rules of Procedure and Conduct of Business in Rajya Sabha. The members of the committee are nominated by the chairman of Rajya Sabha. Let's look at the scope and functions of the committee of petitions. Till the year 1964, petitions could be presented to the Rajya Sabha only with regard to bills which had been published in the Gazette of India or which had been introduced in the House or in respect of which notice of a motion had been received under those rules or matters connected with the business pending before Rajya Sabha. So the function of the committee was limited. At the time, the committee could recommend the circulation of the petitions in extenso or in a summary form so that if the members wanted, they could pursue the points mentioned in the petition and influence the course of the bill in the House. Since 1964, however, the rules of procedure of Rajya Sabha were revised and the scope of the committee was enlarged. Under the revised rules, petitions could also be presented on any matter of general public interest under certain conditions. These included if the issue falls within the cognizance of a court of law having jurisdiction in any part of India or a court of inquiry or a statutory tribunal or authority or quasi-judicial body or commission. If the petition raises matters which are not primarily the concern of the Government of India. Issues that can be raised on a substantive motion or resolution or for which remedy is available under the law, including rules, regulations or bylaws made by the central government or by an authority to whom power to make such rules, regulations or bylaws is delegated. The functions of the committee, on the other hand, are to examine every petition referred to it and to report to the House on specific complaints contained in the petition. To enable the committee to report on the specific complaints, the committee is empowered to take such evidence or call for such papers as it deems fit. The committee has ample powers not only to make recommendations about specific complaints contained in the petition, but also to suggest remedial measures. These can be in a concrete form applicable to the case under consideration or a general remedy meant to prevent recurrence of such cases in the future. The committee receives the petition, it uh, examines the petition and then presents a report to the House on which is then forwarded to the concerned organization of the government department ministry for action and after that the report is the government or the minister concerned has to give a action taken report to the House as to what action the ministry has taken on that report. 
The committee orders the circulation of the petitions that deals with bills or matters pending before the House. As regards the petitions on matters of general public interest, the committee examines them in depth, calls for formal comments from the relevant ministries or departments of the government and also examines witnesses, including the petitioners and the representatives of the ministries or departments concerned with the subject matter of the petition. The committee also undertakes on-the-spot study tours to gain first-hand knowledge of the problem that is the subject of the petition. The committee always works in an unbiased, non-partisan and constructive manner. The report of the committee is presented to the House by the chairman of the committee or in his absence by any member of the committee so authorised by the committee. The committee also follows a set of rules for its internal working that includes post-recommendation action. After making the recommendation, the committee pursues the matter with the government in order to ensure their effective implementation. The concerned ministries and departments of the government are also required to inform the committee within six months from the date of presentation of the report about the action taken or proposed to be taken by them. If the ministries or departments face difficulty in implementing any of the recommendations, they must state the nature of the problem, giving convincing reasons. The committee can also present further reports on the petitions considered by it earlier. With inputs from Panchanan Mishra and Bharat Singh Devakar, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. While committees on petitions provide an important forum for citizens to secure redress against acts of injustice committed by a public authority, the forum is available only in a limited number of cases. But its investigation and recommendation effectively exerts a very significant influence on different aspects of public life. Let's take a look at some of the impactful contributions it has made over the years. The Committee on Petitions has proved to be one of the most effective agencies of Parliament to redress public grievances. Some of its impactful recommendations include the ones made in the 20th report that dealt with the question of layoff of workers of a leather factory in Kanpur. The committee recommended the takeover of the factory by the government. Subsequently, it was nationalized. Similarly, the 30th report dealt with a petition relating to the working conditions of medical representatives and salesmen employed by pharmaceutical companies. The committee recommended a law for them. It resulted in the Sales Promotion Employees Condition of Service Act 1975 that is now in the statute book. In the 47th report, the committee considered the petition of physically handicapped persons who sought exemption from payment of road tax on vehicles owned or used by them. The recommendations of the committee resulted in vehicles used by handicapped persons getting petrol at concessional rates in accordance with the scheme formulated by the government. The 57th report of the committee dealt with the subject public crutches. These were sought in Chandigarh for children of working women. The committee in its report in 1977 not only recommended setting up public crutches in Chandigarh but also desire that they should be set up on a no-profit, no-loss basis at the national level for the welfare of the children. The 75th report dealt with the extension of pro-retired pension to nine ex-Air Force pilots absorbed in Air India. On recommendation of the committee, the government agreed to extend the benefits of pro-retired pension to them. The 96th report dealt with allotment of LPG dealerships to economically weaker sections of the society. On the committee's recommendations, the procedure was streamlined. The 100th report of the committee dealt with the difficulties of the BD workers in the country. Its recommendations resulted in the Ministry of Labour undertaking a major programme to eliminate child labour in hazardous industry, including BD workers, by the year 2000. The 104th report of the committee dealt with restructuring the banking system and other financial institutions. The committee recommended that the Reserve Bank of India must be autonomous in law and in fact the audit of banks and financial institutions must be immediately brought within the ambit of CAG. It also sought adequate strengthening of the vigilance machinery in banks and financial institutions and the ombudsman introduced. The committee has 
given some rulings in the past uh, which uh, have been uh, path breaking and uh, I can only recollect that uh, committee had made some uh, recommendation regarding the use of mobile uh, and uh, while driving and all that and on that basis the government then made some rules because committee felt that mobile usage is becoming a nuisance and leading to accidents etc. So like that from time to time several recommendations have been made by the committee on the basis of which some very important policy decisions have been taken by the government. The 114th report of the committee dealt with frequent accidents taking place at unmanned level crossings. It recommended manning of all the 24,000 plus unmanned level crossings in a phased manner by earmarking separate budgetary outlay for this purpose every year. In the action taken report, the Ministry of Railways gave details of the measures it had undertaken and also proposed to take necessary budgetary outlays for manning of the unmanned level crossings across the country. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Time now for a short break on In Depth. What will be back soon? Stay tuned with us. What are some key legislations introduced in Rajya Sabha? Some of the key legislations introduced in Raj Sabha are the Indecent Representation of Women Bill 1986, the Indian Succession Bill 1991, and the Marriage Laws Bill 1999. <laughs> At what level do you see India and the United States collaborating on trade and commerce? I think from a business community perspective, we know that we need to do our job too. Uh, and so, you know, I'm here meeting with uh, stakeholders in Indian industry to talk about what the future looks like for both our countries. But how big a problem do you think protectionism is? You know, you know at the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, we don't like protectionism. Uh, we, we think that trade is an economic multiplier. At what level are India and the United States collaborating on IP? Well, today, you know, the mindset is we are innovators, we are creators. We're making in India, making for India, but also delivering to the world. And that's a different mindset, and it requires a different orientation on intellectual property. Watch a special interview with Patrick Kilbright, the Vice President of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, at these times on Rajya Sabha Television. The prolific British poet and story writer Joseph Rudyard Kipling, one of the first masters of short stories in English. In 1894 appeared his Jungle Book, which became a children's classic all over the world. Kim, the story of Kimball O'Hara and his adventures in the Himalayas is perhaps his most felicitous work published. Set in and concerned with India, he had come to know and love so well. In 1907, Kipling became the first English language writer to receive the Nobel Prize for Literature. What is Panel of Vice Chairman? Panel of Vice Chairman in Rajya Sabha consists of senior MPs. In the absence of presiding officers, a member from the Panel of Vice Chairman presides over the proceedings of the House. Tales that inspire Stories of social change. A salute to diversity. Promoting public discourse. Events that motivate. 
inspiring the innovative spirit. Watch Rajya Sabha television documentaries. Watch The Big Picture with me, Frank Rausen Pereira, at 9.30 p.m. आयुष्मान भव में कॉल कीजिए शनिवार सुबह 11 से 12 बजे हमारे फोन नंबर हैं जीरो डबल वन टू थ्री जीरो नाइन फोर जीरो वन थ्री और जीरो डबल वन टू थ्री जीरो नाइन फोर जीरो वन फोर सिर्फ राज्य सभा टीवी पर Welcome back to Still With Us on In-Depth. Any citizen with a legitimate grievance against a government or any other public authority has the right to file a petition. While it is a practice that finds its roots in ancient times, it is also enshrined in the Indian constitution under Article 350. In our next report, let's understand the origin of the Committee on Petitions and how any citizen can make a formal petition. The right to petition in India can be traced back to ancient times. Today, it is well recognized that a citizen who has a legitimate grievance against the government or any public authority has an inherent right to seek redressal. Article 350 of the Constitution states that every person shall be entitled to submit a representation for the redressal of any grievance to any officer or authority of the Union or a state in any of the languages used in the Union or in the state, as the case may be. In a parliamentary democracy, any aggrieved citizen can quite legitimately seek the assistance or use the offices the members of Parliament to get his or her grievances redressed. The two Houses of Parliament have their committees on petitions. These committees on petitions provide a forum for citizens to secure redress against acts of injustice committed by a public authority. Although this forum is available only in a limited number of cases, it has proved to be an important link between the people and the government. In this way, the committee performs the task of overseeing governmental activities as well. Committee on Petitions is very important because there are a lot of issues which are agitating the public and unless they get to ventilate those issues before Parliament, they cannot really get relief and therefore not all matters can be raised in the house by MPs. So if the somebody files a petition and the, an MP sponsors it, then it becomes possible for a committee to go into depth of that petition and then make recommendations on the basis of time, basis of which sometimes some new legislation is brought or some other policy decision the government takes based on the recommendations of the committee. So it is a very important democratic tool for governance. The Committee on Petitions is one of the oldest committees of parliament and dates back to the Legislative Assembly of pre-independence period. It owes its origin to a resolution moved by a member in the then Council of States on the 15th of September 1921. The resolution called for the setting up of a committee on public petitions with powers to take evidence. The matter was examined by a committee appointed by the government. This government appointed committee did not favour giving to the legislature the powers proposed in the resolution. However, it did recommend the right of petitioning the legislature but made it limited to public businesses. The committee had received its present nomenclature, namely the Committee on Petitions, in the year 1933. When the petition is given by some 
person then if there is some data missing because basically the person has to say who is making the presentation what is his address what is his grievance and what relief he is seeking so all these things are looked into whether the petition covers all of these things or not if they are not covering then sometimes the secretariat asks the person concerned to provide these det- details and then on that basis it goes on but the, as i said the committee itself pro- prescribes the pro forma or whatever for this purpose a petition requires to be drawn up in a prescribed form set out in the first schedule to the rules of procedure and conduct of business in rajya sabha petition may be used with such variation as the circumstances of each case require and when it is so used it is considered sufficient and should be formally addressed to the rajya sabha the petition must also contain a concise statement of grievance the petition should contain the name and designation or description of the petitioner in concise form with his or her full address and signature or in fact also the thumb impression if the petition is from more than one person it should contain the names and addresses of all those persons and should be authenticated by all of them if literate by their signatures and if illiterate by their thumb impressions a petition should be couched in respectful and temperate language letters affidavits or other documents are not to be attached to a petition petition can be given either in hindi or english if however any petition is given in any other language it should be accompanied by a translation either in hindi or english and then signed by the petitioner every petition shall if it is to be presented by a member be counter signed by him petition suggesting remission or abolition of existing taxes or imposition of fresh taxes or withdrawal of money from the consolidated fund of india towards expenditure by the government are not admissible petition suggesting amendment to the constitution are also not admissible by post bhi bhej sakte hain email ke madhyam se bhi bhej sakte hain aajkal to jo hai na aur is sare kaam ko paperless ke kaam ko adarni pradhan mantri ji ke dwara jo na काफ़ी आगे बढ़ाया जा रहा है और इलेक्ट्रॉनिक इंस्टा उसका उपयोग करके भी जो है संसाधनों का उपयोग करके याचिका समिति के समक्ष तक व्यक्ति अपनी बात को पहुंचा सकते हैं इन द राज्यसभा अ मेंबर हु डिजायर्स टू प्रेजेंट अ पिटिशन टू द हाउस हैज टू गिव एडवांस नोटिस टू द सेक्रेटरी जनरल ऑफ राज्यसभा इफ द चेयरमैन ऑफ राज्यसभा एडमिट्स द पिटिशन द मेंबर कंसर्न इज परमिटेड टू प्रेजेंट द पिटिशन ऑन अ डेट कन्वीनियंट टू हिम आफ्टर दैट नेसेसरी एंट्री इज मेड इन द लिस्ट ऑफ बिजनेस ऑफ द डे for the presentation of the petition the presentation of petition is done immediately after papers are laid on the table the rules of procedure also permit the reporting of the petitions received in the office by the secretary general in the house hamari samiti ke samak jab aata hai us par hum log adhyan karte hain adhyan karne ke baad fir usko jo hai na jo sambandhit sansthan hota hai ya mantralay hota hai un mantralay ya sansthan ke pratishthano ke प्रतिनिधियों को जो है ना यहाँ आमंत्रित किया जाता है और आमंत्रित करने के बाद फिर सारे बिंदुओं को जो है ना विषय बार उनके समक्ष रखते हैं और उनसे उसके संबंध में जानकारी चाहिए जाती है कई बार देखने में ये आता है कि याचिका समिति के समक्ष आने कोई पिटीशन यहाँ पर आई और पिटीशन को जब हम लोगों ने आगे बढ़ाया तो बहुत सारे काम जो है ना इस सारी प्रक्रिया में ही हो जाते हैं उसको जो है ना वहाँ तक ले जाने की आवश्यकता नहीं पड़ती है और उन सामने वालों को तब उसकी गंभीरता का एहसास हो जाता है कि हमने अगर इस दिशा में जो है ना ये काम हो सकता है और इस काम को अगर हमने नहीं किया तो हमको जाकर याचिका समिति के समक्ष अपना पक्ष रखना पड़ेगा और उनको लगता है कि नहीं हमारा पक्ष कहीं से कहीं कमज़ोर है तो फिर उसमें जो है ना वो आने के पहले ही काम को करके और फिर जानकारी यहाँ तक याचिका समिति समक्ष आ जाए Prior to 1964 when petitions could be presented only on bills or other matters pending before the house the secretary general used to receive petitions on pending bills from individuals and bodies and report them to the house these provisions still continue to exist in actual practice however only those petitions which are counter signed by a member of rajya sabha are presented to the house and rest of the petitions as are found in conformity with the rules are reported by the secretary general to the house after presentation by a member or reported by the secretary general as the case may be every petition stands automatically referred to the committee on petitions bureau report rajya sabha tv
So with this, it's a wrap on this edition of In-Depth. Thank you so much for watching.